Now we are going to be moving to predicting cloud types by using the same soundings that NOAA and the National Weather Service uses to predict the weather. So these are data analysis uh, visualizations from the radiosondes that go up twice a day, thousands of places all over the world at the exact same moment. It's really cool stuff. A radio sound sounding is a visualization of the data from one balloon at one time. So this happens to be Caribou, Maine, and it's um, and there is its um, latitude and longitude signal, and this is the date here, and this is the time that it's going up. Remember, the um, balloons go up at midnight Zulu and at noon Zulu. So this is the midnight Zulu balloon that's going up. This happens to be a visualization that is called a Stuve sounding. You'll see another different type of visualization in a minute or two. Um, this is an easier one to understand, and the other one is an easier one to read. So we'll use both in our course, but I start with, with, with this one because it's easier to understand. And what you're seeing here on the x-axis, of course, is the temperature. And we see the temperature here in Celsius in light green. And we see the temperature here in Kelvin in black on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we have two things. We have pressure all the way up to stratospheric pressure, and we have um, altitude in meters. And you know that the red line is the environmental lapse rate. It is the temperature of the air that the balloon records once every 30 seconds or so. It has a, you know, a jiggly line back and forth because of the factors that impact the balloon and the temperature at altitude. And those factor factors include forced lift and expansional cooling, but also competing air masses that move in at different altitudes and can move in more water vapor or can move in even more nitrogen from a smoggy environment. So this red line does jiggle quite a bit as it is moving up through air that is impacted by many different um, types of events. On the other hand, the, red, the yellow line here is the line for the imaginary and calculated parcel. And that yellow line starts at the ground with the balloon and the red line. And then that yellow line gets calculated out to look at the moist adiabatic lapse rate above the lifted condensation level so that the parcel line tends to follow the lifted condensation line, which is generally the red environmental line, until you get to the lifted condensation level, which you can note right over here where it says parcel in here and LCL, lifted condensation level, and it is 921 millibars because they report this in pressure for the y-axis. So 920 mil, 921 millibars is right about here, and that is where our cloud base is forming, right about there. It should probably My fog should probably be up a little bit. Um, now, I have deemed that this is a fog cloud, which is you know, very tight stratus cloud. And I can predict a stratus cloud from here. Why can I predict a stratus cloud? Because my parcel is cooler than the environmental lapse rate. How do I know that? The parcel yellow line is under the red line. But let me show you one other thing. So let's take a, um, let's take a 1300 meter altitude. And we go across at 1300 meters and we get to our yellow line. And then we extrapolate down to find a temperature. And we find a temperature that is at about negative 12 degrees Celsius. 
my parcel has been calculated at 1300 meters to be at about negative 12 degrees Celsius. Hmm. If I keep going on that 1300 meter line, I come to my environmental lapse rate. My, yellow, my red line is, let's extrapolate down, it is at about negative 8 degrees Celsius. Negative 8 degrees Celsius is warmer than negative 12 degrees Celsius, so that when the yellow parcel line is below the red environmental lapse line, it means that the parcel temperatures are cooler than the atmospheric temperatures. If the parcel temperature is cooler than the atmospheric temperature, that parcel is not going to rise because it is not buoyant, it is not lighter, warm air is not rising in the parcel. So therefore, I am predicting that while the parcel lapse rate is below the environmental lapse rate, I'm going to have a cloud that cannot rise. And truth be told, I probably should have made this into a very thin fog. But, I, you know, I had to put some artistry into it. So it's a little bit thicker here. Let's go on to another one in another type of visualization. This is called a skew T uh, visualization of data from one sounding. And this sounding was done in Oakland, California, right by San Francisco, really famous for fog. This is the noon sounding. And what you're seeing here is the same environmental lapse rate, which is all jiggly. And in these skew T visualizations, the parcel is not a yellow line. In fact, the parcel is a brown dotted line. And here is the brown dotted line. And it is the brown dotted line that is at the moist adiabatic lapse rate, which is patterned on this skew T data. But that's pretty complicated. Um, this parcel line is below the, um, the um, environmental lapse rate here. There is a lot going on in this sounding. And when there is a lot going on, we approach the sounding from the ground up. So let's analyze the data that we have here. So we have a, um, we have a balloon that's going up and it has been released at approximately 12 degrees Celsius, about 48 degrees Fahrenheit here. And so you see that the red line and the brown dotted line start together, right? Because the parcel is just surface air at the same temperature. And then you see the lifted condensation of the convection of this working up into the atmosphere. And in fact, right here, this type of sounding gives you the LCL. The LCL is right here, and we note it where the, um, um, where the cloud will start. So these soundings are great because they give you the LCL right on the, um, right on the graph. And then you see that the parcel is a bit warmer than the environmental lapse rate through here. I mean, let's check it out. If you looked at about, um, this only goes through pressures. So if you looked at about 800 millibars here, this does not have altitude with it on these soundings. So you see the different visualizations. If you looked at about 800 millibars and you came down, your environmental temperature would be right about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you kept going at that 800 millibars, you would get to your parcel temp and it would be higher, about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore, your parcel is warmer than your environment and you can condense a cloud and have it rise. But then look what happens. As is the case in San Francisco, you have an inversion and that inversion brings in warmer air that is warming the environment here. And that means that our poor parcel is now going to be cooling at and be a lower temperature than the environment. So that means that that cloud that started out here is squished underneath 
the lid of the inversion. So you see here that we do have a little cloud, but it's squished by the lid of the inversion. If you need to go back and look at inversions in fog, this is a good time to do that. Here is another, um, another Stuve um, visualization of a totally different situation. So those were stable atmospheres and they featured um, stratus clouds or fog. And this is totally different. This is an unstable atmosphere and we can predict the height of an afternoon cloud by looking at this visualization as well. I will tell you, stuves are not fun for looking at unstable atmospheres and you'll see why in a second and you'll see the difference with the other um, SKU-T, um, the SKU-T um, soundings. Here we go. We start out here with a red environmental lapse line that started out right at about 23, 24 degrees Celsius down here. And it is not easy to see the parcel line on these stuves. Um, this parcel line, I'm going to note it for you, it's the nice yellow smooth line that comes up through here. And that is your yellow parcel line. I recognize that it looks very similar to the other moist adiabatic lapse lines that are in light green. Really have to pay very close attention. This is a little bit of a different color. And that is your yellow um, parcel line there. It is going along with the moist adiabatic lapse li lines that are on the Stuve graph. And you can learn a little bit more about that. But as you can see, you've got a parcel line that is above the environmental lapse line for every altitude. And so you have a parcel that can gain altitude after the LCL. Where is the LCL? Well, on the Stuve, you look at parcel. LCL 957, that's millibars. Go get the 957 right around here. Go across and ooh, there's your LCL. I even put an arrow for it, right? So from he about here all the way up, while the parcel line is above the environmental lapse line, you can grow a cloud. Oh, and here's where they meet. So when the parcel line meets the temperature of the environmental lapse line, they're both going to be the same temperature. There's no more rising for the cloud. The cloud will stop there. So my cloud went a little bit above it. Let's just say it had more latent energy. It broke through a little bit. You've seen that before in cumulocongestus clouds. So you can predict from this sounding that this is going to be a day when cumulus, uh, cumulonimbus clouds Here's, your, here's the start of your stratosphere. So you're not there quite yet. This is probably going to be a cumulocongestus cloud that forms because the lid is going to be right at about this altitude, right at about 13,000 meters. All right. If we looked at this on a um, skew T, much easier to see unstable atmospheres on a skew T. Here is your environmental lapse line in red. Here is your parcel line, which starts at the same place, but is brown dotted line. And look at this. You've got your, um, you've got your LCL marked in right here, right? And you can see that the cumulus cloud can grow above the environmental lapse line until right here. All right, and so this is probably going to be more like a, again, you haven't got altitude yet. You do have altitudes here. You do have altitudes here. They're lower. I would say this is more like a cumulocumulus, maybe a cumulocongestus cloud that is rising above the environmental lapse rate until the two meet. I hope that helps you to identify clouds from soundings. Very important. And I'll see you on the next video when we talk about precipitation um, and the precipitation process for forming the water droplets in the condensed um, parcel. See you in the next video.